Okay, I'd like to explain to you something called Dirichlet's principle, which is an extremely important uh, idea in uh, mathematics. Let me draw first um, just a graph, a connected graph. It doesn't even matter what it is. Uh, as long as it's connected, that'll do. What I'm going to do, just for the sake of it, is I'll pick, if you like, a plus node and a minus node. And, you know, the fact is, there will be some x, which is uh, the, the vector of potentials at the nodes, the node potentials. And of course, there'll be some incidence matrix. And perhaps C will, will be some kind of conductance matrix, but really, it's just some um, kind of assignment of a, a value to each of the edges, okay? Because if this is an m by n uh, incidence matrix, the conductance matrix will have will be m by m, okay? Having the values of the conductance. So you can think of an electric circuit. That should be what's in your mind. Now, I can define, without saying anything else, I can define this quantity which is a, 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 it's a scalar function of the potentials at the nodes. So a scalar function of x, and it's going to be x transpose, a transpose ca, and of course we know what that is. This is the weighted Laplacian. Okay. I can define that. That's a scalar quantity. If I've got a, c, and x, I can just write it down. Okay. You give me a graph, I've got the A, I've got the C, um, and I can define any set of node potentials I like and calculate this function, uh, this a scalar function, epsilon, uh, capital E. And I'm going to call this actually a dissipation, and I'll explain later why I call this a dissipation. It's just for convenience, okay? It's really just a quadratic, clearly just a quadratic function of the node potentials, okay? Now, here's the amazing uh, fact that E of X, this is Dirichlet's principle, okay? And now we should think of, let's think of it, in, it's easiest to state it in terms of electric circuits. So E is minimized by the voltages at the nodes satisfying Ohm's law and KCL at the interior nodes. The interior nodes, of course, being these ones here that I'm just redrawing here, just the white ones, and the, the plus minus I'm going to call boundary nodes, consistent with what I was just talking about with the uh, harmonic potentials. Okay, so the amazing, think of it this way. I want you to be clear about what I'm saying here. If you give me a graph and I can just isolate two boundary nodes, that's up to me, I can define values of the potential up to me, anything I like, at the nodes, okay? And the edges have some conductance that are encoded in this matrix C. Now Dirichlet's principle says the following thing. Of all the potentials that you can define at the nodes and that give a corresponding value of this dissipation function, the particular potentials that satisfy Ohm's law on the edges with the conductances given by the conductance matrix diagonal elements and satisfying KCL, Kirchhoff's current law at the interior nodes, that potential is the one that minimizes this dissipation function, this quadratic function of the uh, node potentials. Okay? Amazing thing. It's a minimization problem. Okay? And it's another way to characterize the solution of the circuit problem because, in a sense, the, what this Dirichlet's principle tells us is that the solution we're looking for, which we've already found using a bunch of other methods, minimizes some quadratic potential function. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try to prove that for you here. Um, I'm going to sketch it out. Um, 
So let's let's kind of pr prove this. Well, first of all, let's see what we're looking for because remember, so if we're just trying to, um, so let's ask ourselves, what is the solution um, that satisfies KCL? Okay. Well, remember, we know that uh, this is the this is the key equation. It's the equation that relates the uh, the divergence of the currents at the nodes, that's F, to the potentials, the, the voltage potentials at the edges, where K is the Laplacian, of course. And let's do it like this. Let's write this in this kind of block form. Um, I'm going to let, so let's let the first two elements correspond. This is F where I'm letting the first two elements correspond to the plus and minus node. Ordering of the, of the, of the, the, the correspondence in the, the vectors is up to me, okay. And then I'm gonna write um, this block form for K, the weighted Laplacian with P, Q, and R. And then uh, let's write X as E hat, X hat, okay, where E hat is one, zero. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. I'm just rewriting. I've written this down before, actually. Uh, the, the, the potential at node one plus node is one. The potential at the minus node in the second position is zero. We know that the current into the circuit uh, out of node one, the plus node is CF and uh, the, the current out of the circuit uh, into the minus node is minus CF. And then we've got Kirchhoff current law. Remember, this is, this is KCL at all the other nodes, okay? So we've looked at this before and we can, we can write this down in block form. In fact, let's, let's call this F hat, okay? So let's just expand those out. What we get then is this a smaller block at the top, which is P E hat plus Q transpose X hat. And in the second block, we get zero is equal to Q E hat plus our x hat, okay? Those are the two blocks we get when we expand this out. Well, we've already, we've already argued in a previous lecture, I think I said it as an exercise, that this r here must be uh, non-singular, which implies that the solution we're looking for, um, x hat, is uh, minus r inverse q e hat. So that's the solution that solves the problem which satisfies Kirchhoff's current law at the interior nodes and Ohm's law on the edges. So apparently this uh, vector here that we've written down, this one, where x hat is given by this is the one that minimizes the dissipation. That's what we have to show. Okay, so let's try to do this then. We need to consider this dissipation function x, okay? And let's just rewrite this then using the same kind of notation we just introduced with this uh, rewriting x transpose like that with the little e, e hat and the x hat and then rewriting the Laplacian like this, okay? And then we get the e hat um, x hat here. Well, let's just expand. Let's just uh, expand that out. We've got e hat transpose, x hat transpose. I'm going to expand th this out here. I get p e hat plus q transpose x hat, and then I get q e hat plus r x hat. Okay. And if I expand that out again, I get um, e hat transpose p e hat plus E hat transpose Q transpose X hat plus uh, X hat transpose Q E hat plus uh, X hat transpose R X hat. Okay, I've just expanded everything out. Okay, now here's a little exercise for you because I don't really want to have to do it here. If you study this term and this term, it's easy to see that they're actually transposes of each other so that they're the same, okay? That means that I can actually write this as the following thing, x transpose, hat transpose, x hat, right? Plus two times x hat transpose, q e uh, hat, plus this thing. 
But I'm just going to write that there in a box because the reason I'm writing it as a box is I don't care about it because it doesn't depend upon x hat. And I'm trying to minimize this, this uh, dissipation function with respect to x hat. So I don't care about constant vectors because I can't change those. So, uh, so let's just write that there. You know what I mean. Okay. Now, I'd like you to just, as the next step, and I'm going to do this in yellow, or no, no, orange. Let's consider this particular thing. X hat plus R inverse Q E hat, all transposed, R X hat plus R inverse Q E hat. Again, okay, that's just a quadratic function of X hat. Okay, let's just uh, expand that out. Well, I get x hat transpose r x hat from that term and that term plus um, r inverse q e hat transpose r x hat from that cross term. And then I've got plus x hat transpose r r inverse q e hat from the other cross term. And then I've got something else that actually I'm just going to put in a box because it's um, just so you know, it's that times that goes in there. And I don't care about it because it's just a constant. I can't change it with, by changing x hat, so I don't care. Now, again, little exercise for you. This term and this term turn out to be just transposes of each other and they're therefore the same thing. This means that this is this, so I can write this then as x hat transpose r x hat plus two times, let's pick this one. I'm picking this one because it looks easier because that r and that r inverse cancel out, giving me x hat transpose q e hat, okay? Plus that box that I can't be bothered to write down. Now, we are nearly there because have you noticed something? I showed you that this dissipation that we're trying to minimize is given basically by this thing plus a, some constant I don't care about. And then I've shown you that this object here is given by this plus some, const plus some constant I don't care about. But have you noticed that this thing in the blue that I've underlined is precisely the same as this thing here that I've underlined? So therefore, I can say that I can write this dissipation function as this function plus some constant vector that I don't care about. Now, we decided earlier that R was uh, non-singular and invertible. And in fact, it's also easy to show that it's a positive definite matrix. Okay, and again, I'm gonna leave that as an exercise. So let's, uh, let me just say that this is an exercise. You have to use the definition of the uh, weighted Laplacian that it came from. Exercise, prove it's positive definite. Okay. Now, I've got a vector here and it's transpose here. So you can see, look, that if this is a positive definite, so, let's, so perhaps let's write it as capital X transpose Rx plus some constant. Um, you can see now easily how to minimize this right-hand side. I can't change the constant. So the minimum is gonna happen when capital X is zero because R is a positive definite matrix, okay? Which means that this thing will be positive if x is not zero, okay? So the minimum must occur when capital X is equal to zero. But if you look at what capital X is, look, it's precisely this thing. And we can just finish this off, look, by saying that capital X is equal to zero corresponds to x hat being equal to minus r inverse q e hat, which if you look back, 
was exactly the condition I got, exactly the expression for x hat I got when I solved Kirchhoff's current law at the nodes with, with um, Ohm's law on the edges.